All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Charlie Lefevre. I'm one of the uh, ministers at the Chestnut Mountain Congregation in Chestnut Mountain, Tennessee. Um, we're coming at you this week with another uh, lesson for our uh, Sunday morning service. Um, we typically do meet on Sunday mornings, and we typically have a Bible study and a worship service, but we do know that um, during the COVID pandemic that's been going on in, uh, this year, that people uh, would rather just stay at home and hear a lesson. And so we do these lessons right here. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get this glare off my glasses. It's kind of hard with this lamp. But um, we know that with everything that's been going on, a lot of people feel like that they, they, just, they just don't feel comfortable coming to church, uh, meeting in public, having big gatherings. So um, that's why we decided to do these lessons once a week, post our lessons. That way people feel like they still get an opportunity to hear um, the gospel. And we have, we as a congregation and me as a minister, it's it's a great privilege to be able to do this. So um, this week, I thought we'd talk a little bit about um, farther along. You know, I, I want us to think about the aspects of, you know, I want us to look at the idea of what farther farther along really means. If you ever, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to First uh, John chapter three, verses one through three. First John chapter three, verses one through three. It says this: It says, "Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us." That we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God and it, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But when we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purify, purifies himself just as he is pure. So a little bit about this text. You know, the faithful Christian, people that are been faithful Christians their whole life, or people that have just been faithful Christians for just a short period of time, they always want to know about heaven and what it will be like, you know. Um, that's something that the curiosity peaks in each and every single person. We all we all have that desire to figure out what heaven's going to be like, what it's going to be like when we get there. You know, there are many questions uh, that people have, you know, what it will be like, where we will go, what we will do, and how will we exist? You know, that's just a that's that's just a few of the questions that people could ask about heaven. And in this passage, John frankly admits that he doesn't know what we will be like. You know, he doesn't know the answers to all these questions. He doesn't know how to answer these questions. He doesn't frankly frankly uh, even want to try and answer these questions because he doesn't want to give an answer that is wrong. But he does say, however, that we will be like him we will be like god him referring to god for john this is enough you see he's satisfied to have these questions answered farther along farther along as we continue our journey he wants these questions to be answered as we continue on our journey you know farther along is a old familiar favorite in the songbook a lot of people love that song uh, it's it's an easy one to lead so a lot of people that's probably one of the first songs that they ever tried leading um I can't remember exactly right off the top of my head right now what number it is in the songbook we use at Chestnut Mound, but it's a very popular song and a lot of people love it. It was written in 1911 and it was attributed to W.B. Stevens. And um, the words of this song are comforting and help us to go through difficult times in life. You see, we listen to this song and we listen to the message and it helps us remind, it reminds us that as we continue on our journey farther along as Christians, we will have the answers that we need if we just keep our attention focused on God. So let us consider some thoughts based upon this familiar hymn. So farther along, we'll understand more about the mysteries of life. You see, there are some things in life that are a mystery. You know, a lot of people ask the question, why do, why do such and such things happen? Why do bad things happen in life? Life is a mystery. We don't know all the answers to why everything happens the way that they do in this life. But I want us to consider Moses' statement in Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 29. It says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. You see, we can ask more questions that we will than that we will ever have the answers to. We can we will constantly ask more and more questions and we'll never have the answers to them. But we do have the answers to all the things that we need spiritually in this life. You see, Moses tells us that everything that we need to know in this life will be revealed to us. Everything we don't know will just be left unto God. That's in, that's the way it's desired to be. That's the way God desires it to be, is that we know the things that we need to know, and God will worry about the things that he only needs to worry about. 
But we have all the answers to everything that we need in this life spiritually. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 talks about life and godliness. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 and 12 talks about how grace of God teaches us. And then 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 tells us to be complete and thoroughly furnished. So, um, you know, we have all the answers to everything that we need in life if we just stay with God. Um, you know, the other question we ask is... Uh, we must rely on our faith to answer. You know, when we have questions about our faith, when we have questions about things of this life and of this world, we need to rely on our faith to answer those questions. You see, uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 gives us the definition of faith. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's basically seen without belie believing without seeing is what faith basically is. And we must trust that God knows the answers when we don't. We must rely and put our faith in God when we have questions that we need answered and when there's stuff that we don't know the answer to because that's what God's for. God knows the answers to the questions that we don't know the answers to. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 20 and 21 states this. It says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. You see, farther along, all of the mysteries of life will be revealed. We will understand more about this life if we continue on our journey in this life as Christians. We will understand why things go the way that they do, why things happen the way they do, um, why we have to follow things the way that we do. That's what this whole life is all about as we have journey along with Christ in our life. So farther along, we'll also understand more about the uncertainties of life. You see, there are times when life is uncertain. We sometimes feel like we don't know to whom to turn or where to go. You know, we have this idea where we don't know what to do. We have this idea what's the first option we need to we need to rely on something to help us get out of this situation. You know, I felt I felt this one time uh, when I was in high school. Um, for those of you that don't know, I played football when I was in high school, and my junior year we were at a passing camp at Cookville High School. And my parents had been harping on me all the time. I was the kid that lost everything. So they wanted me to put everything in my duffel bag that they got me. My phone, my wallet, my keys, my clothes, everything that I needed, they wanted me to keep in this duffel bag. And one time, one night we were at a passing camp at Cookville High School. We get done with the passing camp and I'm looking for my bag and I can't find it. I have no idea where it is. I asked my head coach, I asked the Cookville head coach. Uh, the guys that ran the equipment stuff at, for Cookville Hospital, I asked everybody where my bag was, and I didn't know what to do because I didn't have my cell phone, I didn't have my keys, I didn't have my wallet. I was lost, and I was scared. I didn't know what to do. I had no idea who I was going to turn to or where I was going to go. So one of my buddies that was on the football team calls me, or he doesn't call me, he hands me his phone, and I call my parents, um, and I tell them what happened, and I tell them I can't find my stuff, and uh, so my, I, I called the house phone that way they could use their cell phone, try and get a hold of my actual phone. And they finally get a hold of my cell phone. And thankfully one of my buddies that was one of my teammates, uh, was the one who accidentally picked up my duffel bag and put it in his car with him. And again, we were very blessed because it could have been going to, uh, Monterey. It could have been going to Carthage. It could have been going to Gordonsville. There was a lot of teams at this passing camp, and it could have been going to anywhere, and we didn't know where it was going. So thankfully, we were able to, thankfully, thankfully, we were able to, it was one of my teammates that ended up picking it up, and it ended up not being as big of a deal as we thought it was going to be at first. So, but in that situation right there, I had no idea what I was going to do because I had no way to get home. I had no way of contacting my parents. I had no money or no driver's license anyway, so I couldn't just drive someone else's vehicle home. I didn't know what I was going to do, and I, so I, I thankfully, one of my teammates was willing to let me borrow his phone, and I called my parents. So, but part of my uncertainty was that I had not such an experience before. I've never done it. I've never experienced, like, I've lost stuff before. Don't get me wrong, but I'd never lost everything like that. I had no idea who I was, what I was going to do. I was in the situation where I didn't know what to do. And sometimes uncertainty can only be uh, elevated by going through this experience. So when I place my faith in God in such times, he will help me get through these times. When we have these times of uncertainty, when we don't know what to do 
in life, we will always have God to turn to and he can help us get through situations like this. He knows what we need and how he can help us. I want us to look at the example of Abraham for a second. God said that Abraham would have a son by Sarah. And this was beyond Abraham's experience. He had never heard of someone Sarah's age having a child. And I mean, that, that's scientifically true. Someone at Sarah's age is not supposed to be bearing children. I mean, this is something that Abraham knew couldn't happen. But in Romans chapter 4, verses 19 through 21, it tells us, And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. So in this instance right here, it tells us how Abraham was knew that God could provide the things that he had promised Abraham. He knew that he could have a son through Sarah, and he kept the faith in that instance. I mean, he knew that the, he knew the circumstances were not the best, but he also knew how powerful God was. You see, God ensures us that when we are uncertain about life, he is there. Anytime that we are uncertain about the things of this life, when we don't know what's going to happen, when we don't know what's next for us, God is there for us. Whether it's uncertainty of necessities, Matthew chapter 6, verse 30. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is... And tomorrow is cast into the oven. Shall he not much clothe you, O ye of little faith? Whether it's uncertainty of the uncontrollable. Matthew eight twenty six, And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the wind, winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Uncertainty of self. Matthew 14, 31, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? So in this instance, we see here, God tells us, O ye of little faith, put your faith in me. Trust in me to help you during all these times, and I will help you during all these times. We understand that life is not easy. Sometimes life is hard. Sometimes life is we question what's going to happen. But if we put our faith in God and we keep our faith along him farther along this journey that we journey on this earth, we will have all the answers and all the help that we need to get through this life and to get to the next step, which is eternity. So farther along, we will be better prepared and able to endure life's uncertainties through God. You know, we'll also be more prepared for the inequities of life. You see, life has a certain amount of inequity. There is no guarantee for justice in this life. In today's world, criminals receive little or no punishment, whether it is, uh, whether it be rape, child abuse, murder, etc. Large companies can cheat and steal from their employees without consequences. It seems as if there is no justice, but not all wrongs are right in this life. Some wrongs are only righted after death. And we are, when we are wrong, we must place our trust in God, knowing that justice will be served one way or another. You see, and a lot of people have felt this with the last couple of months with everything that's been going on about the Black Lives Matters protests and the riots that have happened because of those. Um, a lot of people just feel like that there's not been justice served for what's ever happened. Uh, I'm not going to get into that because that's just not who I am. I'm not a person that debates uh, stuff going on in the world or debate politics or anything, but I will say this, there has been some wrong some on some side in everyone's life at one point, whether it be something as simple as, like we mentioned, um, a company maybe miscounting your check, or it's something as serious as rape, child abuse, or murder. I mean, you know, there's, there's something that has happened to somebody's life, and we feel like that there's not going to be any justice given to them. But as we remember, you know, we are supposed to be people that don't always seek justice and always seek revenge. We have to wait for, you know, God to provide that. And as we mentioned, you know, sometimes not all, some wrongs are only righted after death. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 8 says this. It says, thou, If thou seest the oppression of the poor and violent perverting of judgment and, violent, and justice in a province, marvel not at the matter, for he that is higher than the highest regardeth, and there be higher than they. You see, justice is served through the cross. Jesus' death on the cross was for the sins of mankind. Each and every single mistake I've made, each and every single mistake anyone has made, Jesus served that 
justice by dying on the cross. He fulfilled that. There is God's merciful way to bring justice is through his son, Jesus. If sinners will call upon the Lord in faith and obedience, God will pay the price for their sins. There's nothing that we have to do except obey and keep the faith. That's all we have to do. We don't have to sacrifice ourselves. We don't have to do anything crazy. We don't have to go through what Jesus went through. All we have to do is keep the faith and obey God's commandments, and God will pay the price for our sins. Titus chapter 2 and verse 14 says, Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works? 1 Timothy 2, 5 and 6 for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of, him, of God in him. Romans 3.25 and 26, Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Simply put, we can keep going on and on and on about how Jesus came to this world, lived a perfect life, and then died that cruel death on the cross. That way we may have a hope with him Sunday in heaven. But we understand that message. We understand that's why Jesus came to this earth. Jesus' number one purpose when he came to this earth was to teach people about teach people the truth and eventually die on the cross for all of us. If one does not accept God's justice through the cross, then one must accept God's justice for eternity. You see, if we don't accept his son, if we don't accept his mercy through his son, if we don't accept that, we're going to be lost for eternity. And we have to we have to accept that justice that he deems us worthy of. Romans 12 and 19 says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Hebrews 10 and 30 says, For we know him that hath said, Vengeance, vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Jude chapter 1 and verse 7 even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. You see this? If we don't accept God's truth, if we don't accept God's son, Jesus, if we don't accept this, we will be subject to accept the eternal punishment that we are deemed worthy. And farther along, God will make all wrongs right someday. We have to understand that, that even though sometimes they're in this life, we see, we think that everything's going to just, people are going to be able to get away with stuff that they want to get away with. They can do whatever they want one day that they will have to answer for it. And same thing that we are. We're going to have to answer for everything that we've done in this life. But one or two things is going to happen when we answer those. God's either going to look at us and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Or he's going to look at us and say, depart from me. I know ye not. And I would rather be the first one. Believe me, the day of judgment is going to be a day where a lot of people are going to realize all the things that they did. They should have listened a lot more to people when they heard the message of Jesus Christ. So in conclusion, farther along, we will be able to understand more about the mysteries of life, the uncertainties of life, and the injustices of life. We will be able to understand all these if we just keep obeying the Lord's will and keep the faith. That's all we have to do. We obey what God tells us to do and we keep the faith. And as Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10 tells us, we will receive a crown of life if we do these things. So typically this is the point where I offer the invitation. I'm not going to offer a traditional invitation like we usually do. But I will say this. If you need help with anything in your life, if you look at the mysteries of life, the uncertainties of life, and the injustices of life, and you blame a lot of people for those things, you need to maybe reevaluate yourself as a Christian. You need to come forth and look at yourself and understand that God will handle all of these things if you let him. God will handle everything that you struggle with if you let him help you with all the things that you struggle with. Maybe you need prayer. Maybe you just need something as a simple prayer to be said for you to help you grow stronger as a Christian, to know that you need to change in your life. Please, feel free to contact anyone at the Chestnut Mountain 
co uh, congregation. We would be happy to help you in that instance. Or maybe you're listening to this and you haven't become a Christian. You haven't began your walk with Christ. You need to do that because there's going to be a day of judgment and it's coming. We don't know when, don't know how, or we do know how, but we don't know when it's coming and we don't know where it's coming. But we do know that one day that there will be a day of judgment and we have to understand that when that day comes, it's going to be too late. There will be no second chances. There will be no do-over buttons. There will be no restart. You need to make things right. You need to be baptized for the remission of your sins and become part of God's family. So if there's any way that we can help you out, please feel free to contact myself, uh, any of the other ministers at the co uh, congregation, any of the members. They can help you out. We can, whether it's just sub something as simple as sitting down and studying, saying a prayer with you, or if you would like to make the commitment to be a Christian, please feel free. We're always open. We're always open for to save souls. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Um, it's an honor to keep doing this every week. It's We're very fortunate to have the means of technology to be able to do this each and every week. Um, I know with all the things that are going on in the world, a lot of people still have a lot of questions. When's it going to be? You know, the same questions that they're asking uh, about, the, about heaven is some of the same questions that uh, they're going to be asking about this COVID virus, you know. Uh, you know, what's it like with the virus? Uh, where will we go when the virus hits? What will we do? How, how does this thing keep existing? When will it go away? Um, but, you know, um, everything that's going on in the world again, it's this is just another mystery of life that God is in control of. So we have to understand that. But if we farther along, if we just keep God in our hearts and minds and we keep doing what he tells us to do, we'll be okay. We'll get through this life and farther along. Uh, we'll go through everything, and then one day we will be with him in the kingdom of heaven. Again, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Um, I hope these lessons help you guys. Uh, it helps us as a congregation. We enjoy doing it, and we hope to see you all again real soon. And everyone just continue. Please keep staying safe, staying healthy, and God bless everyone. Thank you very much.